Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, this uh, particular amendment addresses the section in the bill that relates to local government aid. And very simply put, what it says is if you are a city that harbors illegal aliens with your sanctuary ordinances, you will no longer get money from the state of Minnesota. Uh, we have two or three cities in the state of Minnesota right now that prohibit their police departments from inquiring about the legal or illegal status of their residents or residents that may be traveling through the city. Uh, most people in the state of Minnesota, according to all polls that, polls that I've seen, do not agree with this. And as many members know, this is a particularly hot issue in the state of Minnesota right now uh, due to the uh, bus accident that was in my particular district a couple weeks ago. Uh, members, uh, you can take a very simple vote right now here today to say it is absolutely wrong in the state of Minnesota to allow cities to look the other way in terms of law enforcement when it comes to harboring illegal immigration. Uh, we have voted on this before in this body. It has passed overwhelmingly on a bipartisan vote of both Democrats and Republicans saying it is absolutely wrong to have these types of ordinances in place. And for those of you who say the state shouldn't be telling the locals what to do, I would tell you that he who pays the piper calls the tune. These folks are getting millions upon millions upon millions of dollars from the state of Minnesota. And I would suggest to you that the taxpayers who pay into the state treasury have no interest in paying for uh, the city bureaucrats to not do their job in inquiring on these statuses. And I've got the uh, information. I can email it to members on uh, the ordinances that St. Paul and Minneapolis have on this. But members, this is an easy, logical, common sense vote that the average person in the state of Minnesota agrees with. And I would ask for your support. The fact of the matter is that there are plenty of folks in law enforcement who abide by this practice, and they abide by this practice precisely because it's good law enforcement practice. Members, there is no such thing as a sanctuary law. There is no such thing as a sanctuary ordinance in the state of Minnesota. In my city, if an individual is involved or a suspect in a crime, it is absolutely the responsibility and the duty of our law enforcement officers to pursue that individual and to inquire every aspect of that individual's identity. And in fact, my police department often works with federal agents to do that and of course sometimes do, does that in terms of uh, uncovering people's undocumented status. And so there is no sanctuary law. There's no sanctuary in the state of, in the city of St. Paul or Minneapolis. If you're a criminal, I don't care what your status is. Our law enforcement officers are going to find you out, they're going to know who you are, and they're going to deal with you accordingly. The issue here is whether or not, in the course of normal activities, no one doing a crime, just existing in public space, a law enforcement officer can pull me aside because I'm brown skin, because my first name is a Latino name, my last name is a Latino name, it's actually an Italian name, and inquire based on that what my resident citizen status is. That's the issue here, members. Representative Seifert, you're not giving us the names of the officers that have come into your office, but I can give you the names of plenty of police chiefs who in this body in the last couple of years came forward and testified against short-sighted, wrong-headed action like what you're proposing here today. Members, make no doubt about it. This is about the state of Minnesota second-guessing the wisdom of our law enforcement chiefs interjecting themselves in the process of running a police department and coercing, coercing your local governments in that second guessing of our law enforcement officers by holding over them state, state aid. Do you really want to go down that road, members? Do you want Representative Seifert 
next year to stand up with another thing that he doesn't like about your local community and coerce you in that manner? We don't do this in state statute, members. There's only two things that we currently require under the LGA, and it's reasonable. And that is that our, our, our local units of government don't violate le levy limits and that they, they file the proper filings with the state auditors. That's the only things they have to do in order to abide, in order to be eligible for local government uh, assistance in terms of things that we would frown upon. Do we really want to open the door here, members, so that Representative Seifert or anyone else in this body can second guess the wisdom of your local elected officials, of your law enforcement officers? They were here. They testified repeatedly. Let us run our police departments the way we need to run them. We understand our constituents. We understand our communities. We know what we need to do to be able to properly police these communities, to create the kind of environment where we can have information and a relationship with everyone who's in that community. So if someone does something wrong and bad, we get that person. That's what St. Paul holds to. That's what Minneapolis and some other districts hold to. If you're a bad guy, we're coming after you. And we don't care what your status is. But we are not going to pull you over because you're brown, because you're dark, because you're from another nation, and start asking what your status is. That is not Minnesota values. Those are not good law enforcement processes and procedures. They're the kind of procedures that eventually make our communities, in fact, less safe. So members, this should be an easy vote on behalf of your local jurisdictions, say no to the coercion of the state, second-guessing what our law enforcement officials deem to be the best practices for their community. Vote no on the Cypher Amendment. Madam Speaker, members, you just heard it. You just heard hypocrisy right there. You argue local control for the LGA, and then you have an amendment that gets rid of local control. Minnesotans are smart. You can't have it both ways, members. Representative Seifert was very clear when he talked about this amendment. He said, I had to draft it so it fit germaneness. That's code for this is a gotcha political vote. Please vote no. Representative Dominguez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, I stand today uh, in oppose of this amendment. Members, this is another issue again. Let's pick on those immigrants. Let's just pick on those immigrants, the ones that are underserved. Let's attack those folks. They don't have a voice. Let's see what we can do with those folks. Because minority leader, that's all you've been doing is picking on immigrants since you've been speaking about passing legislation. Why not do the work that you came out here to do? Not to pick on immigrants, but pass good legislation that's going to help the state of Minnesota. I'm very much opposed to this legislation. Our police officers, both Minneapolis and St. Paul, are doing a tremendous job. They've been working hard. They've been keeping law. And now you're going to put another amendment on them to, to even do more? I very much oppose this amendment, Madam Chair. Vote no.